the apartment hunting in Williamsburg. It's not going. Parental downpour check. There is a life I lead in this city. Hurrying to cut my Good morning. Happy Friday. I had the day off from work today, so I figured I would start a little weekend in my life vlog. I have some fun plans this weekend, so I just figured I would take you guys along for everything that I'm doing. Nothing too crazy, but we're getting out and about, you know what I mean? Did I mention I'm off from work today? I'm literally so tired I can't even remember what I just said. We watched the first preseason football game last night, so I was up until like 11.30 which has been too late for me lately because then I'm just exhausted the entire next day. So today I'm literally so, so sleepy. But at least I have like the day off from work so I can kind of just lounge around and hang out and I don't have like really any responsibilities today. Also the coffee helps. She's good this morning. Yeah, I've spent the morning cleaning up my apartment a little bit. I slept in until like 9.30, which isn't really sleeping in, but my body really doesn't sleep past that time nowadays. Like 9.30 is the latest I'll sleep in, which is, it is what it is. So I slept in a little bit. I picked up my apartment. I still need to do a little bit more picking up because it's kind of chaotic in here. Made a coffee. I've been watching Love Island UK. The new episode dropped last night and I was also doing my morning street easy apartment hunting situation. The apartment hunting in Williamsburg is not going like at all because I we just cannot seem to find an apartment in our date range yet and we're about a month and a half out from moving which is very frustrating and terrifying and like makes me so anxious. I just want to have something signed. I want to know where I'm moving, when I'm moving. So every single morning I get up and I immediately browse through Street Easy to see if there's any new apartments that open up in Williamsburg. I browse through all of the saved apartments that I have on our list that we're looking at for units. I like, call people and it, I'm just like not having good luck with the Williamsburg search because either people don't answer my phone call, they don't answer my Street Easy request, or there just haven't been units available in an apartment building in like literally months so that's how that's going it's not a good way to start out the morning i know but i just feel like if i don't wake up and immediately do that i'm gonna miss the opportunity to see like a really good building if one pops up so that's how my brain is wired nowadays so i did that gave me anxiety now i'm sitting here giving myself more anxiety with coffee but here we are just wanted to pick up the camera say good morning Welcome back to the channel. If you're new and you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe down below. Also, go ahead and follow my Instagram because whenever I'm not vlogging, I'm posting like stories on Instagram. I've been a lot better about doing that recently because I've actually been having fun with it. So make sure you follow my Instagram to keep up with like behind the scenes content and stuff like that that you wouldn't see in the vlog. You're my best friend there. If the other day generally is going to continue this way. Just made some avocado toast with an egg on top and a huge glass of water for a little breakfast lunch situation. Finished watching today's episode of Love Island. I watched Love Island UK. I attempted to watch Love Island US on Peacock because I do have a Peacock subscription and it was not good. Like, I don't know if it was maybe just the first two episodes, but it was literally so cringy that I just stopped watching it. Maybe I'll give it another attempt after I'm finished with Love Island UK, but I am definitely a Love Island UK girl over Love Island US, just because I feel like the content is so much better and it's not as cringy as Love Island US. I'm trying to figure out what to do with the rest of my day. It's 12 o'clock now and it's literally so gloomy outside. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to rain at like three. So if I were to do anything, I would have like a three hour window to get outside. Part of me just wants to stay in my apartment today and read and clean up and sleep because I'm so tired and I feel like I honestly haven't been able to catch up on sleep in about a month now, like literally since I got back from my cruise because we've just been go, go, go. The weekend I got back from the cruise, I was doing apartment tours all weekend. So we were waking up really early. I also had school stuff going on. Last weekend I went to Ocean City, New Jersey with my boyfriend's family. So I woke up early both days for that. And then this weekend is the only weekend that I literally don't have anything planned around. I'm not going anywhere for the first time in a while. So part of me just wants to like take this weekend to relax and 
kind of like recharge my social battery and just recharge my battery in general because she's on empty but also i feel like i want to like get outside and explore new york because i haven't been here in a while and i like want to go to central park and do all these things so i'm currently having an internal debate on what i should do with the rest of my day i do have saturday and sunday also so if i wanted to take today to rest and clean up and do whatever i want to do i could do that and then go out and about on Saturday and Sunday, but I just feel like I am wasting my time by just sitting in my apartment because I sit in my apartment all week. Does that make sense? Or does that not make any sense? I'm going to give myself some more energy by eating because this is the first time I've eaten today. I should have eaten earlier. That was bad of me, but I just I got distracted with my coffee and watching TV and stuff. So I'm gonna eat this. And then I'm gonna figure out what to do with the rest of my day. I need to put away clothes and stuff, so that's like also a priority. We shall see. I didn't record any of it, but I just impromptu cleaned out this cabinet. You really can't tell a difference, but there was just a lot of random stuff that had been shoved in here that had collected up over time. And since I'm moving soon, I'm in full on clean out mode. I just like threw a bunch of stuff away in here and I'm donating a lot of clothes as well, so I literally just have like piles of stuff everywhere, which is why it kind of looks like a mess. Getting ready to head out for a little bit to go on a little walk just to get out of my apartment, try to wake myself up a little bit. Little outfit of the day. I'm wearing an oversized t-shirt. This has been my go-to style lately, biker shorts and an oversized t-shirt. I'm just obsessed with the look. I think it's kind of like effortless and I'm a big fan of it, so I've been investing in a lot of like cool trendy oversized tees obviously this one i got in bermuda but i still thought it was kind of cool because it had like a vintagey look to it then i'm using my brooklyn and tote bag because i need to drop off poshmark packages my nike shoes blue lemon biker shorts and amazon sunglasses because i'm obsessed with them and they're the only sunglasses that actually like look good on my face and they're affordable and they're easily replaceable if they break so Big fan of that. That was a fail. The only thing that was successful was dropping off my Poshmark packages. But trying to find any new used books, epic fail. As it always is in New York. Here's my rant for a second. I don't know what it is with New York, but it is so hard to find like a good used bookstore. Either that or I'm looking at all of the wrong places because I've tried a bunch of them and I can never find a bookstore that actually has books that I would want to read. Hear me out. Drop the Poshmark packages off at post office and then I'm like, mm, let me stroll over to Strand Bookstore, which you know what? Always fails me lately, but I try to give it another chance because deep down I love Strand. It's a whole vibe. It's a great bookstore if you're looking to pay full price for a new book and a used book. So I go over to Strand, I go in the used book section and they actually have like a good selection of books. They have some Colleen Hoover books. They have um, Christina Lauren, Ellen Hildebrand. Like they had so many good books to choose from. Here's where it goes south though. For some reason, Strand Bookstore prices all of their used books at like a full price. So the price of a used book will be the exact same as the price of the new books that they sell, which literally defeats the entire purpose of buying used books. Like what is the point of selling used books if you're gonna price them at $17 each when they've literally been bought before, read before, by a whole other person, the person sold it to you, and you're reselling it on the market, what's the point of pricing it at full price? Like that just makes absolutely no sense to me and it defeats the whole point of your used book section. I just don't get it. For example, the Christina Lauren book that I saw that I was gonna pick up on Amazon, $9.87. At Strand Bookstore, $16.99. Why would I buy a $17 used book at Strand when I could just buy it for $9 on Amazon. If it was $9 in the used bookstore, I would 100% support Strand book, buy local, screw Amazon, but you can't price a book double the amount it's worth. Like that is just crazy to me. I'm done shopping at Strand unless I wanna go buy like a brand new book and spend $20 on it because they are overpricing their books and it's 
actual insanity, like actually insane. Next used bookstore that I stopped by because it was on my way back to the East Village anyways is called the East Village Bookstore. It's on St. Mark's and it's like a very cute used bookstore, exactly what you would picture a used bookstore to be, like a little like rundown vibes. They had like a tiny air conditioner in the back. They actually had like a good selection of books. They had Ellen Hildebrand, they had mystery thriller books that I had been looking for, they had Colleen Hoover, they had just so many different options to choose from. And here's where it goes wrong again. I'm finding all these books, I'm picking them up, I have a stack of them, and then I see a sign that says cash only. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me because normally I do carry around at least like $20 in cash. But this time I like didn't have any cash and I'm like, Okay, I get that a lot of local stores like to use cash for things rather than have people use cards because there's like fees and stuff. Oh, I totally understand that, but it's also 2022. I was like, whatever. So I put all the books back and I literally left because I don't have cash. So I definitely would go back to that bookstore again, but I literally have to take out like cash before I go, which is kind of annoying and frustrating. I would rather just be able to use my credit card. If they had a credit card machine, I literally would have walked out of there with like five or six books because they had such a good book selection, but they're just like not in the 21st century, clearly. I'm having a hard time with used bookstores in New York. Basically, moral of the story, end of the rant. If anyone lives in New York and has a good bookstore, used bookstore recommendations that actually have fair prices for used books and aren't just cash only, please let me know because I will literally go out of my way to go to this bookstore to get like used books and support local but the ones near me just like aren't doing it and aren't cutting it for me so comment down below if you know a good used bookstore that doesn't charge twice the amount for a used book and is in the 21st century currently reading the second book in the a court of thorns and roses series this one is a court of mist and fury i've heard that this is the best book out of all of the books in the series so i'm very excited to like get into it I'm only about 70 pages in and it's pretty good so far, but I feel like it's going to pick up soon because that's how the first book did. It took a while to get into it. Current read. Getting ready for dinner. I'm wearing these khaki shorts from Princess Polly and this top from Princess Polly. I honestly debated giving this away because it's kind of short, but I feel like paired with the right outfit, it's not too bad because these are pretty high-waisted. So this is the outfit of the night. I look like I'm a little explorer. I'm putting on some makeup. I think that I'm just going to do brow gel and that is literally it because I cannot be bothered with makeup nowadays. Also going to do a little hairspray moment because I've got some major flyaways. Alright, and that's the look for tonight. Slick back pony, urban explorer outfit, <laughs> and then I'm probably going to wear Air Force Ones. She's basic tonight, but... It's also literally so hot outside, we're legitimately in the middle of a heat wave. So I feel like if I decided to wear any more clothes than what I'm already wearing to dinner, I would literally sweat my butt off at dinner. And that is not the vibe for this dinner. It really isn't. <laughs> Good morning, happy Saturday. I've had another slow morning in the books, which we're not mad about, but I am getting ready to head off to Pilates, so I figured I'd pick up the vlog and say good morning. Spent the morning watching Love Island, obviously. Had coffee, obviously. Picked up the apartment a little bit. Basically the same thing I do every single morning. And now, like I said, I'm getting ready to head out to Pilates. I'm doing a solid core class in Nolita. I'm doing it with a friend from college. So I'm very excited for that. We're probably gonna get like a little juice or a coffee after two and just have a little hangout session because I haven't seen her in a while, so I'm excited to see her. And we love a good solid core class. I literally just did one on Thursday and I'm still sore from it. So this Saturday afternoon class is going to, it's gonna hurt me. Like I'm already anticipating the fact that I'm not gonna be able to walk. And I also have another class on Monday with another friend at a different location. So I'm just like, three solid core classes back to back with only a day in between. I did myself dirty. I really did. Hopefully it'll help me somewhere along the way and not hurt me because right now I'm in pain, but I feel like in the long run, it'll benefit me. So we're doing that today and then after the solid core class, I'm not sure what I'm gonna get up to. 
I do have a little birthday pregame that I'm going to tonight for a friend, but I don't think I'm gonna go out. I think I'm just gonna stop by for a little bit, say happy birthday, drop off a bottle of wine, and then have another chill evening in. I haven't really been in the mood to go out lately to like bars or anything. I just am in my chill era. I would rather just stay home and watch a movie and be antisocial to be completely honest. I guess it's not antisocial if my boyfriend's here with me, but it's still antisocial because I see him all the time anyways, so that's just like the phase of life that I'm in where I would rather just stay home and play the Switch or watch a movie or do something that doesn't involve drinking. So, loose plans for the day, but taking you guys along with me. Just wanted to pick up the camera, say good morning again. It is a lot later from the last time I picked up the vlog, and I am honestly very tired, but it's just been such a good day like mentally very healthy socially healthy went to solid core earlier like i mentioned i went to the nolita location for the first time and first of all the solid core nolita location is massive it's like 10 times bigger than the nomad location and the east village location there's like two rows of reformers rather than just one so that was crazy it's such a good class i took it with the same person that i've been taking it from recently and he's just like such a good instructor i like the way that he teaches the class and the way that he demonstrates and the way that he explains the exercises because if you've ever been to solid core you know that it can be kind of overwhelming because the instructors are speaking so fast and nine times out of ten you can't catch what they're actually saying but he's really good about explaining himself which is what i appreciate since i'm still kind of new to solid core and then after solid core my friend and i we went to brunch lunch i don't really know what you would call it at gray dog it's right across from ruby's ruby's the wait for two people was like an hour and a half to two hours so we just decided to nix that plan and go somewhere that we just stumbled across and it actually was really good so big fan of that then i just came back here to a cold shower because it is so hot in the city that by the time i walked back to my apartment i literally wanted nothing more than to take a cold shower and to crawl to bed so that's exactly what i did and i feel so refreshed i've been reading for a little bit i'm on page 281 of this book so i read a decent amount last night and then i just read like 50 pages now i was also watching brooke michio's blog because i just made like a late I guess it's like an early dinner i just had leftovers from last night from the pizza place i was watching her vlog while i ate i apologize for not vlogging at solid core or brunch but it just wasn't the vibe and i was having fun and catching up and so on and so forth also i can't tell if the lighting throughout this whole clip is off because i don't have my glasses on so i apologize if it gets really bright and then really dark I only have one shade open in my apartment because like I said, it's literally so hot outside that if I had all the shades open in my apartment, even with the air conditioner running, it would heat up so fast. So I only have one shade open. That's the update. I'm gonna continue to sit here, watch vlogs, read, hang out in the bedroom, chill. I might take a nap, honestly, before I have to go out to this pregame tonight for my friend's birthday. So we shall see what we get up to, but that's a little update that I have for now. dressed for the night we're wearing jean shorts strapless top gold jewelry very simple only plan on going out for like an hour and then coming back because your girl is very tired i just want to crawl in bed and watch a movie but you got to do what you gotta do to support friends so this is the outfit top aritzia bottoms revolve they're the rollers brand they're literally the only shorts that i ever wear i need to buy another pair of them but also summer's almost over so not worth spending the money on now, honestly. Then we're drinking one singular White Claw tonight. Maybe two. One for now, one at the pregame.
Sunday. We're gonna start off Sunday morning with little unboxing. I got a package from Revolve. And before you guys like fast forward through this section, they're affordable items from Revolve. They're also essential items that I needed to order. I know Revolve has started to recently, within the last few months, get a bad rep because influencers and people that share like Revolve unboxings tend to get clothing items or just items in general from Revolve that are like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. But for me personally, that's like not how I use Revolve and I tend to lean more towards the affordable items on Revolve. I don't think I've ever purchased anything from Revolve that's been over $100. Before you guys fast forward through the section, these items are affordable. They're on my Revolve favorites, which is linked in the description. If you guys also want to see other affordable Revolve clothing items, makeup items, hair items, whatever, that's all under my Revolve favorites. Like I said, linked in the description of this video, so go check that out. Because Revolve, believe it or not, does have a good selection of affordable items. I feel like the only items that are ever shown, though, are the very expensive ones. So just letting you guys know. They do sell affordable items as well. For some reason, influencers decide to show like the $500 dresses and stuff like that, which is just not realistic, is it? The first thing that I got from Revolve is I had to buy some more shampoo. I use R Co shampoo. I have for literally years. It's the television type. They have different types of the shampoo, but I use television. I use the television conditioner as well, but I was only out of the shampoo. And then I bought some new pajama shorts because I've been running through my pajama shorts like it's nobody's business lately. I haven't been willing to wear like my long pajama pants because it's, there's a bug on my window. <sighs> I'm so tired of this apartment. I don't even remember what I was saying about pajama pants. So basically I think what I was saying is that it's just been too hot in New York to wear long pajama pants and I've been running out of my pajama shorts. So I bought these super cute pajama shorts. They're just plaid pink purple they're from revolve but they're from the brand oh they're from free people's like pajama or intimates line is what they call it they were literally 28 dollars the material was super light very good they had good reviews so i got it in a size medium and i'm excited for these because i've been waiting for them to come in and i need some new pajama pants so big fan of these like I said, they're linked on my Revolve favorites, but I'll also have them linked down below if you guys want to check them out. They were literally 28 bucks, so the perfect pajama pants to wear in the summer. I'll have this linked also. This was $35. It's like not a super expensive brand, but it's definitely effective. I've used this since I was in college, and it has truly saved my hair. Every time I think to go to switch to a different brand, I always end up back with r &Co because they're the only shampoo brand that I trust to actually clean my hair. Also on the topic of affordable clothing, this shirt that I got from PacSun is so good. Their Land Rover collection is trending on TikTok and also I saw Kenzie Elizabeth wearing it. So I went to check it out and I was like, okay, I need because I know it looks basic, but this is like the one of the comfiest t-shirts that I now own and it's so simple. It's this gray color and it just says Land Rover in the top left-hand corner and the back has nothing on it. I wanna get the matching sweatshirt for this, but they're sold out currently. But I got this in a medium, I think. I'll have the size linked down below, but I'm pretty sure it was like 28 bucks from Sun. It came quickly. Such a good basic t-shirt for the summer and just in general, like I could work out in this, I could lounge in this. It's trendy, it's cool, it's cute. I'm a big fan. So I'll have this link down below also. Sun. they put their heart and soul into this collection because it is so good. We came to Greenpoint to explore and it literally started downpouring on us. And now we're hiding under this thing, scaffolding. But the scaffolding is currently flooding. And we have one dry patch of land. Update is literally starting to flood and it's pouring. We look so dumb right now. 
may want to check around the corner to see if it's on the bottom of it. Okay. So dumb. My feet are so wet. Does anyone else's shoe collection just pile up by their front door by the end of the week? Because this is a weekly occurrence of me literally piling four to seven pairs of shoes by my door and then picking them up at night and putting them away in my closet. I need to get in a better habit of just putting them away immediately because this is pretty annoying. see me <clears throat> I know that's annoying but it's gonna be we're gonna make this quick what a day it has been started out this morning with schoolwork like I mentioned and then I went over to Williamsburg and hung out for a little bit we decided that we were going to ex try to explore Greenpoint which is kind of like another suburb of Brooklyn it's next to Williamsburg just like more towards Long Island City and I've only ever been over there once or twice but I think at this point it's definitely an option for us to move there potentially kind of sort of so I wanted to explore the area and kind of see it for myself again through the eyes of what it would be like to live there if that makes any sense because before I was just seeing it through the eyes of someone that was just exploring a new place so we tried to do that like very much so attempted but got caught in a torrential downpour as you guys witnessed because i vlogged a little bit of it it was raining so hard that we ended up taking cover in a coffee shop and then we just ubered back to his apartment and i hung out there for the rest of the day i read a really good portion of my book i think i only have like 150 pages left so i'm definitely gonna try to finish this by tonight because it's just now getting like spicy and good to the point where I want to power through it. So that's my plan for the rest of the night. I also have a school call at 7.40 and it's 7 o'clock now. It's 6.53 actually, but almost 7 o'clock. So I'm going to read until then and then after my call, I'm going to take a shower and I'm going to call it a night and go to bed because I am tired and I want to be refreshed and awake for work tomorrow. That was my day. That's my evening, but I just wanted to go ahead and end off this vlog here and thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new and you're not subscribed, you should stick around. I do a lot of vlogs like this. I also do like fashion hauls, travel vlogs, lots of content to come your way. So make sure you subscribe down below, follow me on Instagram, and give this video a thumbs up. Bye.